God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glorify thy name. Easy song. I know we don't have our words up, but it's Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name. Spirit, we love you, we worship and adore you. Glorify thy name. So it's an easy song, easy words, but most of all, most of all, we worship him. Hallelujah. Most of if we don't come in and we just stand up here and go, just listen to the singing and don't ever worship him, we have failed miserably. We're here to worship Jesus and to praise and to magnify him. He's a good God. Hallelujah. But the reason a lot of times we get off and sometimes we might go flat is because we're not up here to be seen. But we're up here to worship him. And if I go flat or if I get on the wrong verse, it's simply because I'm worshiping him. One time I sang one, one verse and Kelly sang another, another verse all the way through. But you think I cared because I was worshiping my God. I could have cared less because I was in that heavenly place. I was in that heavenly place. And once you get there, sister, you don't want to come out of it, do you? You want to stay right there. Hallelujah in the presence of the Lord. Ho! Oh, everybody sing. Glorify thy name. Oh, yes, hallelujah. We love you. We worship and adore. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. In all the earth. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Church. Oh, let's praise him. Jesus, oh, we love you. We worship and adore we you. Worship and adore. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glorify. Glorify thy name in all the Praise God. Glorify oh, thy name. Church, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Wait on you, hallelujah. Wait on you to praise and to worship Him. We worship and adore. Oh, mighty God, Holy Ghost, glorify Thy name in all the Oh, 
Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah today. <laughs> oh, glory to God today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And he's glad to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. This is a holiday weekend, and I appreciate all you that have made your way to the house of God. And I noticed some folks from over here moved over here. People don't like to get in front of that camera for some reason. <laughs> I like being in the lion's life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you happy, happy, happy? The day is the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible said you should rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah to God. I appreciate the Lord today. Give honor to him. I'm so grateful, so thankful for the privilege and the opportunity that I have this morning to stand before you and declare the greatness and the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we hallowed the holy name today. Hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb of God today that taketh away the sin of the whole world. We are a blessed and a privileged people this morning to be able to serve the Lord, hallelujah, while the world's gone crazy and on their way to hell. God preserved us and kept us and dealt with us, and we were smart enough, amen, hallelujah, to realize the work of Jesus Christ and what he has done for all of humanity. Everybody has the opportunity. I want to get one thing straight. You know, people say, I don't think God has sent me to hell. I don't think God's, God don't send nobody to hell. Let's make that straight. God sends nobody. It's a choice that you make. You can choose to serve the Lord, to honor him, or you can choose to walk away from him. And those that does not choose him, hallelujah, there ain't going to be a pretty situation or a pretty thing, amen. But I thank God this morning by his loving grace and his tender mercy that he come to my house one day and he not, I'm talking about this house, and he, and he dealt with my heart, hallelujah, and it was just, I just couldn't resist him. <laughs> oh, hallelujah to God. I appreciate the goodness of God today. And it's good to see you. And if, uh, our Facebook watchers, uh, well, I've got some good news. This week, we should get all this stuff done and get all the kinks out of the sound system, I guess, and get everything done this week and finish it up. I don't know when Larry's going to finish, but uh, he looks good what he's done back there, taping everything out. But we like to get this behind us, amen, and, and get on with the program of God. And I know we experience some difficulties in the, in the technical aspect of it, but we'll get, up, we'll get it fixed, so don't worry about it, and we'll get back to church as normal. But this morning, Sister Paula, uh, did he find anything yesterday? Well, we'll do that. Remember her this morning. And Sister Treva has a request for a, a friend of theirs that they had to take to the hospital this morning. And Sister Christina, I understand, has got the man cold. Not just a woman cold, but she's elevated to the man cold, and that, that, that'll that get you down. A man cold is the worst thing you can have. So we want to pray for her this morning. We want to pray for our nation, the leaders of our nation. We want to pray for our friends on Facebook that watch us and and just lift everybody up. And, and if you need prayer this morning, you come down here and we'll pray for you. Good to see Norma this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, I guess all people's well today. Hallelujah. Nobody wants prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a God. That can do anything. You can't breathe. You don't know if the baby pushing against your heart. Come here. Lay your hand right here. She thinks it's information in the chest. Not information, inflammation. 
But get ready, get ready, get ready. Let me believe God will deliver from this. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to set it all. My God right now. Right there, right? All right, get a hold of it. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost of God, in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, I expect the deliverance today. I expect the hand of God to move upon her and this infirmity of her flesh where the enemy's trying to build a case. We dissolve it right now by the power and by the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right now, God, do the work. Do the work right now in Jesus' name. Mm. Now, test it out there. Prove it around. Is any... Holy Ghost of God. Now I want you to breathe, try to breathe through your nose first. You haven't done that in a year? Okay. Hallelujah. Holy God. Holy God, I pray for this sinus cavities. Lord, that you remove any swelling, any infection. Lord, that you will not struggle to breathe. My God, right now, in the name of Jesus, it's got to come under subjection to the laws of creation of God. When God made man and looked upon him and said it was good. Hallelujah to God in Jesus' name. Get ready, get ready. Here it goes. Mm. Now breathe in. Oh, you can breathe now. She said it doesn't help. She lives in a wheat field, but it's opened up. Oh. oh, yeah. A lot better. Says she hasn't breathed like that in a year. Well, this shall not be an occurring thing. Hallelujah to God. God shall dissolve every problem in that area. In Jesus' name, when you go back to your seat, begin to rejoice in the Lord and thank God you're breathing good. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost of God, in the name of Jesus this morning. I bring every petition, every request before the throne room of God today. Lord, I'm just believing that, come here, Norman. Come down here. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I'm a seat of a bowl in my house. Hallelujah to God. 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 Touch your head there. Holy Jesus, hallelujah to God. Glory to the up underneath my high. Lord, I bind every infirmity of her flesh. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and we declare the counsel of God. By his stripes you were healed. Accept and a keep what God has done for the body of Christ in the name of Jesus. And this terrible, terrible load and confusion of the mind. We bring clarity to it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, are you ready? Here we go in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray for every request, every petition, Lord, and we just pray for our Facebook friends today. May the hand and the mercy of the living God be upon them today, Lord. God, may you touch them this morning with your sweet anointing. And may the preaching be made easy today. And may the worship of God be exalted into the heavens today, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb, hallelujah to the Lamb. And Lord God, we pray for our nation, our, our president, God. We pray for the peace of Israel. Hallelujah to God. May the protection and the prosperity and the peace be given unto them today, God. Most of all, bring revelation their way concerning the things of the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. Amen. Praise God. All right, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. All right, you can be seated. When I just prayed for the peace of Israel, how you feeling, guys? Let me tell you something. Anybody here saved? Huh? All right, if you're saved, do you have to work 
and struggle and fight to keep your salvation. You do, don't you? The Bible calls, us, calls it warfare. Let me tell you something. When God heals you, the Bible says the enemy will come immediately to steal away the seed of God that is sown in your heart. I, God just dropped something in my heart there when I was praying for Israel. You know, according to the scriptures, the people gladly received Jesus Christ. But it was the spiritual elite of the religious people that was against Christ and turned the people against Christ. It runs parallel with what you're seeing today. It's the spiritual, I mean the the political elite that has turned people against our nation and against our president. I can't imagine anybody not liking America. It's not perfect, but I guarantee it's better than any other country. Amen. 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 Hallelujah to God. All right. We'll just go ahead and receive the morning tithe and offering this morning. As you give, give it unto the Lord. And we ask God's blessing. Holy Ghost of God, in the name of Jesus today, Lord, we ask you, God, to bless each and every individual under the sound of our voice, and we bless them today, and we thank you, Lord, as you have blessed and prospered us as we can come and, and lay aside that which you have commanded us to do, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. morning hallelujah I'm saved and I'm happy about it I love Jesus and I'm happy about it hallelujah he's a great one he is the great one the king of kings and the lord of lords alpha and omega the beginning and the end everything from A to Z that's Jesus praise God We've got several new songs that we're going to be uh, bringing out, uh, hopefully soon, and uh, some, a lot of them are pray, new praise songs, but um, then we'll be able to put them up here too, but we have several, so I know a lot of you probably know this one, Raise a Hallelujah, and I know you've heard it on the, the radio, if you don't, you probably maybe have it on CD or whatever, how you do that now. You know, my car came without a CD player, and they expect me, a senior citizen, to be able to figure out how to play music off of my phone. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> We're gonna sing Raise the Hallelujah. So everybody sing with us this morning, and we can learn those words while Kelly plays it and sings it. Praise God. A hallelujah in the presence of the enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah, my words witness my melody. I raise a hallelujah. Come fight for me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You gotta hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Hallelujah With everything inside 
out of me. I raise a hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I will watch the darkness flee. Praise God. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your heart. God. I raise a hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the next one is on Jordan's stormy banks. <laughs> on Jordan's stormy banks. So y'all probably know as many of this these words that I do. <laughs> I don't have a lot of words in this one, but um, y'all worship with us this morning. I tell you what, God can do mo- the miraculous. And I asked people Wednesday night. I said, how many have had a then Jesus moment? And actually, a lot of hands went up because I'm going to tell you something. When we seek, seek, seek the Lord and we have a problem in our life, it's just like you if you have a child. My Lord, even if it's the smallest problem ever, that hurts your heart. Well, Jesus feels the same way about us. He cares about everything in our life, no matter how small. And I tell you, by the raised hands Wednesday night, a lot of people had then Jesus moments. He's a good God. Praise the Lord. On Jordan stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful line to Canaan's barren happy where my possessions lie Our Lord, those wide extended plains Shines one eternal day There God the sun forever reigns And scatters night away Promise land, and shall I 
heaven shall I see my father's face and in his bosom said, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house of many mansions would not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, though you might be also. And that word mansion just simply means dwelling place. I'd be happy just to get there. <laughs> the Bible said, if the righteous are scarcely saved, that means if the righteous are scarcely saved, where shall the ungodly and to Christ's people and the sinner appear? Amen. So uh, it's my goal to enter into the kingdom of God. And uh, just to be in the presence of the Lord is sufficient enough. And uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, Jason said Susan done an outstanding job Wednesday night. He, he, he's just buttering her up. And uh, I was on my, I left coming back Wednesday, I think about 12 o'clock our time, and uh, I got done with my project, and uh, I started to stay over and preach for Kenny, but I want to get home to that little woman that I've got. <laughs> Because I miss her when I'm gone. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Now, I, don't th I don't think she misses me like when she's gone because I never hear from her. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Does everybody have a oh, Travis. Good to see you, man. Praise God. Trepa's daughter, good to have you today. Amen. Just pray the Lord bless you today, each and every individual. And... uh I appreciate everybody's you, you, you long suffering and all that while we're trying to get through all this building process and getting everything up and running. We have experienced some troubles. Uh, one first time we didn't have no volume, had picture but had no volume. And so I understand some folks said they're static, uh, but we'll, we'll try to get all this corrected. Preaching to you this morning on the greatness of Jesus Christ, number four. I could spend, a preacher could spend his life preaching on the greatness of Jesus Christ, couldn't he? Amen. But I'm not intelligent enough or smart enough to declare all the great things that Jesus is. And we'll text this morning in Hebrews chapter 12, 
verse, verses 1 and 2. And, uh, and then when I get on down there, what, I'm, what, I did, what I, I've done, I've just gone through the book and just picked out special things that he is for humanity, the people he come to come to save. Amen? And so we'll read our text in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We find here, or we'll find all through the Bible that Christ is very an, ex, an, an inspiring example of how that we should live and obey the Word of God. Because he, he, he obeyed it all the way to the end. He fulfilled His commission in everything that He did. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So evidently we got things that weighed us down and sometimes there's a particular sin in people's lives that they have trouble conquering it, getting over it. But the Bible said let's just lay it down uh, because it easily besets us, gets us off track. Sin is very deceptive and it can get us off track. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking. Somebody say looking. looking. Say it again. Looking. Under Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross he despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And the word set down in a in a place of a, po a power and authority. And the Bible says, look to Jesus. What's he telling us here? He said, if you want to run this Christian race, he said, keep your eyes upon Jesus Christ because he's the, the perfect example. The Bible said that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Author means the chief leader. It takes the lead in anything that's set before him to do as an example. So Jesus took the lead and made himself an example of how he overcome all things. And the Bible said he's the finisher of our faith. That is the definition of this. Finisher is one who, who in his own personal experience raised faith to his perfection in the, and they displayed the high example of faith that can be displayed. Hallelujah to God. So no wonder the Bible tells you and I, just look at Jesus. Just watch what Jesus did. Just watch what Jesus said and do what Jesus commands us to do. Because he was the highest example of how a Christian should walk and please God. We understand that Jesus blazed the trail of salvation and finished his course. He was the perfect example of obeying and pleasing God to the fullness. The Bible said he went and he endured the cross, it said. It's by the shame. The cross, the Bible said, cursed is any man that dies on the cross. So it was the lowest death that anybody could be a partaker of was being placed on the cross. But he endured the cross and people disliked him and some were ashamed of him but he refused to think about them kind of things because of the joy that was set before him. The joy that was set before him was that he would finish his commission, his call of God, his plan to, to give his life a ransom for the sins of the entire world. Now that joy was set before him this morning. Hallelujah. And that same joy is before him today. And we understand even though he, he had to suffer the, the, the curse of the cross, he had to suffer the shame and all of the humility that was thrown up against him on top of that, all the painful experience 
of the things that he had to go through, he looked beyond that. He did not let that enter into his mind or his thought pattern. He said, I come for a purpose, uh, and my purpose is that I lay my life down as a sacrifice for the sins of the entire world that we might reclaim what the devil took from Adam or Adam gave it away by his rebellion against the word of God and Jesus' attitude was, I'm going to take back from the devil what Adam gave to him and what we lost in Adam, the Bible said we gained it back in Jesus Christ, hallelujah. So, through the work, through the work of Christ, through his work, the Jew, see, salvation, well, when Jesus come, he said, I can't go nowhere but to the house of Israel, to the Jew first. And the Bible says, because of the rejection of him, that he turned to the Gentile people of the world, amen, to take out of them a body of believers for his name's sake. Hallelujah to God. So, but because of the work of Jesus Christ, the Jew and the Gentile alike are now able to experience God's love and all of God's riches at the expense of the death of Jesus Christ. And when he fused the body together, he brought the Jew and the Gentile into one body, which is the church, and we are the body of Jesus Christ, and he is the head. And what do we mean by the body of Christ? We are his mouth, we are his feet, we are his hands, uh, we are the things that God uses, amen, to do the kingdom of God's work. In other words, this morning, when I was praying for Shana and them this morning, that was the body of Christ, Christ the head of the body, that was the body working on behalf of Jesus Christ. And that's what we are, members in particular. We all have individual members. We all have individual ideas and jobs to do for God. Every one of us is important to God. There's no one more important than the other. I love every part of my body. And I don't want to get rid of any of it. I want to keep it as long as I can. And it's all important to me. My fingers, my eyes, my ears, uh, <laughs> my little tongue whatever it is. It's important to me. So therefore, you are important to the body of Christ because you are the vessel or the vehicle which God will move through to accomplish his work. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Now, Jesus said, I am the, the anointed one. I am the Christ. I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. I am the Son of Man. I am God Almighty manifested in flesh. But we got to sort of just do just a quick examination. I mean, Lord God, I could, hey, so many scriptures I could go into, I, I, I wouldn't even get done, done with that part. But I want you to go with me, if you would, this morning to Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3. Now, if you uh, want to read Luke 2, you can see all the great things that were said about him. And, uh, but Luke, in Luke chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. When, when all the people that were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus talking about under the baptism of, of John the Baptist. And Jesus was baptized and praying. The Bible said the heavens were open to him and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now, why is that important? The Bible said everything has to be established by two or three witnesses. Is that what it says? It's not the testimony of one, but the testimony of two make things correct. 
So what we have here, we have the heavens open and the Holy Ghost of God come down in the shape of a dove and hovered over him. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son. Now what, what's all this about? See, it's been prophesied all through the Bible that Jesus the Messiah would come to give his life a ransom for the, whole, for the nation of Israel and the whole world. So what is established here is two witnesses, the voice of God and the Holy Ghost coming over him is the second witness. In other words, it proves to a fact that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the holy God of heaven. Hallelujah to God. And something else I want to throw you away. What, you know, the Bible talks about him as the son of man. And you notice a lot of works <laughs> that Jesus did, he did it as the son of man as humanity. But we know that it was the work of God, but he, he, did, he said, I am the son of man. In other words, I'm flesh. I'm of the earth also. And what that shows us and puts on display to us, that if, he, if he'd have done it as God, then it, we, we would have had limitations put upon us. But he done it as a man showing us that through his name and the power of the Holy Ghost that we could do the same thing that he is doing. And Jesus said, these works that you see me do, he said, you shall do greater works than these because I go unto my Father. And the power of the Holy Ghost and the authority of Jesus Christ is how that we pray for the sick. We cast out devils and we do all these things that the Bible tells the church to do. Now also in John 1 and 29. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The Lamb, the sacrifice. In other words, he's the Lamb of God is what he's saying. He's the one that's going to fulfill the Lamb of the Exodus when Israel was taken out of bondage and they had to kill the Lamb. And they had to take the blood and apply it on the doorpost of their home so that the death angel would pass them by when it went through the land. And his had to cook all of it, not just partial of it, not just parts of it, but you had to eat the whole thing. That household had to get, eat the whole thing. And if it was uh, not enough people in the house, then you found somebody else that could come and dine with you. And, in other words, that the whole lamb would be consumed. And what, what that is showing us, that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, as John says here, over uh, the voice said it was the Son of God. John says he's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So that Lamb that Jesus became fulfilled that of Exodus. And that Lamb, Jesus, was to die and to shed his blood for the sins of the nation of Israel and for the sins of the entire world. It's available to all that want to call upon him and come to him for salvation. And we are to take the body of the Lamb, which is the word of God, and Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. That word eat means to gnaw, to chew, to break down. What's God saying? Except you take this word of God 
and bring it into your heart, into your mind, and digest it and let it get down in the depths of your heart so that you will not sin against God because the Bible uh, come to you, the Holy Ghost will bring to you, well, you're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to do that. See, a lot of people don't know, for example, living together is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. A lot of people, you'd be surprised, don't even know that. A lot of people don't know premarital sex is wrong. It is. So, Jesus begins to fulfill all these things. The Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. And here's John. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, John was six months older than Jesus because they were cousins. But John said he was preferred before me, and he was before me. How was he before him? Because he was the Word of God made flesh. He was the beginning, he was the end, he was alpha, he was omega, he was everything in between. He said, and I knew him not, I didn't know who he was. I mean, he knew him as Jesus, his cousin, but he didn't know he was the Lamb of God, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, that I didn't know who he was, that he should be manifested to Israel. Therefore, I come baptizing with water, and John by record again, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, of whom thou shalt see the Spirit descended and remaining on him, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and by record that this is the Son of God. So, we understand the record of Jesus Christ is truly true, is it not? We proved it to you by the word of God, by the testimony of the witness of the Spirit, the witness of the Holy Ghost coming down, and John being the third witness as an eyewitness. This is what God told me, and this is what I saw. So Jesus is exactly this. He said, I didn't know who he was at first. I just knew he was my cousin that has been revealed to me by the Spirit of God and by the voice of God that Jesus is indeed the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ. Now, Luke 4 and 16. Now, Jesus here in 4 and 16 uh, is after Jesus has been on a uh, uh, 40 days of fasting and the Bible says that the, the the tempters came to him, and he overcame him all. And verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. In other words, God rests upon me, upon the Son of Man, the flesh man. You understand that? It's just like right now. The Holy Ghost is moving through me as I preach. The Holy Ghost came upon me, and it's moving. So, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and the re why is the Spirit of the Lord upon me? Because, just simply because the Spirit of God is upon him. But the Spirit of God is upon him for a reason and for a purpose. He has anointed me, hallelujah, permanent anointing of God. He was the anointing. He was the Messiah. He was the Christ. He was God incarnate in flesh. To preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. Hmm. In other words, he come to do whatever was necessary for anybody that's willing to call upon him, to love him, and to serve him. That's why he came. Hallelujah. Could you get amen to that? So we, it, it, but we establish the fact by witnesses that Jesus is the Son of Man, that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Lamb of God, that he is the Messiah, 
that he is the anointed one. Could I get an amen to that? Hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to bring out some things that the Bible declares concerning Jesus Christ. Now, if you person that takes scriptures, you can write this down. And in the book of John, we find that he was God. His deity was portrayed in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and verse 14, and 1 Timothy 3, 16. Illustrates to us and points out and proves to us without a shadow of a doubt, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <laughs> and he goes on and talks about he made everything that was made, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was in the world, but the world knew him not. He came unto his own, his own received him not. But men as did receive him, to them he gave them the power or the authority to become the sons of God. Let me tell you something this morning. You as an individual, if you don't know God, you have the authority. Facebook, if you don't know God, you have the authority and you have the right to choose Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen, as your Redeemer, as your kinsman, as whatever you need him to be, you have the right, amen, to get saved. And the gates of hell cannot stop you. Only you can stop yourself. All right, we also find in John chapter 2, he, John identifies him as the Son of Man. He goes to a wedding feast and he socializes at the wedding feast with all kind of people. And the Bible said he was friends with the, with the needy. He was friends with sinners. He was friends with publicans, which is tax collectors. In other words, he illustrates his perfect humanity. And if we want to throw a scripture in there, I'll give you Philippians 2 and 8. And 1 Timothy 2 and 5. The Son of Man. He had to be the Son of God. He had to be the Son of Man. If he done everything as the Son of God, then that would not give us the illustration that we can do the things that he tells us to do. He said, you will cast out devils in my name. You will speak with you tongues. You will lay hands on the sick. And they recover. Because he illustrated to that through his humanity, through the power of the Spirit of God, that you can do the works of God. You can do the miraculous. You can lay your hands on the sick. They can be healed. You have the authority to cast out devil. And the gates of hell should not prevail against you because of the power of the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus that abides within you. Uh, oh, somebody will get excited. Can I take a drink? And this is not white light in this water. Because I'm country, you might think I got white lightning in there, but I don't. I got all the lightning on the inside I need called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, glory, somebody. Well, you know, I just don't think I can live right or I would get saved. You know, that was my thought pattern. Because I had godly sisters. Had a godly mother. And I'd look at the life they lived and I was looking at me. My God, Lord, uh, I'd like to get saved, but I, I can't live right. Anybody ever felt that way? Before you come to God, I can't live right. I, look, look, look at Jean, look at Bob, Marley and them, Andrew and Bernie, look at, look at my other Lord. I can't live right. Well, see, what I didn't know was when I got right with God, I repented of my sins and put it under the blood of Jesus Christ and the load of the world and the things that I once loved to do, I found I don't want to do them no more. And now on top of that, he gave me the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, which leads and guides me into all truth and gives me the ability to live right. Now, I'm not saying you might never go wrong or something, sin or something. I ain't saying that. 
Because the Bible even covers that, that if we do sin as a Christian, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and sin. In other words, the Bible said a righteous man has saw a fall seven times. Woo! But he'll get up seven times. A lot of people, you know, they start the race, start serving God. They're excited. And then somehow in their youth or whatever, uh, they, they stumble and fall and sin. And the devil begins to play tricks in the, oh, you've done it now, man. It's over for you. You washed up. You can't do this. Hallelujah to God. If that be the fact, there wouldn't be nobody in the church. There wouldn't be no preachers preaching. There would be no saints of God in the church to hear what the preacher had to say. Because the Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. I would love to live exactly like Jesus did. I, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm doing my best to. I'm striving to. He said, strive to enter. <laughs> strive to enter the kingdom. Strive to go down the straight way. So that lets us know it's not a cakewalk and also it's not a journey of oneself. This is not something you can do on your own. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to put your hand in his hand and walk with him and he'll see you through the troublesome time. And if you do fall, if you do sin, he'll pick you up and pull you out of the merry pit of sin and take you and clean you off and wash you off, amen, and, and lead you down the highway of holiness and righteousness before him. Woo! That would make anybody happy. I'm about to get stirred up here. I better settle down a little bit. Sing a song. I'm about to get carried away here now. Hallelujah to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Man, it's easy to preach about Jesus. I remember Joe Jack Ratliff, a great man of God. And I used to, me and him spent a lot of time together even though he lived in Delaware. And I'd go up and see him quite often, preach for him, and, and uh, I might go up and stay three or four days and only preach uh, Sunday. But he liked me, and we'd always have fellowship. And he'd look over at me. We'd be sitting there sometime. He'd look over at me and say, Brother Mike, he said, when you ain't got nothing to preach, he said, preach Jesus. He said, son, you'll preach. <laughs> Jesus always preach. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Bible's all about Jesus. The Old Testament prophets all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. No wonder Paul penned the phrase, look at Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus, hallelujah to God, and you cannot and you will not fail. You will enter the kingdom of God if you follow Jesus, amen. He'll take you through anything that you gotta go through. If you can take the pull, he'll pull you through it. If you can take it, amen, he'll get you out of it. He will help you endure hardness uh, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He will give you weapons uh, of your apostolic career. And they're not carnal weapons, uh, but they're mighty to God through the pulling down of the stronghold, casting down the imagination and anything that wants to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So as the Son of Man, he done great things. John chapter 3, everybody's very familiar with that. Where it pins the phrase, you've got to be born again. But he's seen in John chapter 3 as a divine teacher. He was instructing one that was master of Israel, a man called Nicodemus. In other words, he's supposed to note it all about the things of God. And Jesus said, except you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. Except you're born again, you cannot see the things of God. He's, and he said, look, at, see what people do, they look at the spirit, the, the scriptures from the natural point of view. He said, now, hey, I'm an old man here. How am I going to enter my mother's womb and be born again? He said, man, I'm not talking about that. He said, I'm talking about you being born 
from above. I'm talking about the new birth, amen, that your name is written in heaven and you confirmed your, your residence, amen, up there by coming to me and repenting of your sin. So we see him instructing as a divine teacher from God and, and Nicodemus says under him, I recognize you, I know who you are, you are a teacher, you're a great teacher, and I know if I know anything, I'm the master of Israel. If I know anything, I know that God sent you to us. Will you folks, believe it or not, God sent me to you to instruct you in the ways and things of God. I'm not a compromiser, will not be a compromiser. I will not be a preacher pleaser to please the cloud. Hey man, I'm going to please God. Because all that matters is what I've done for God, and if I please God or not. Hey man, I figure God will take care of the rest, and God has. But I, I tell you, I want you to know, I want you to understand, I want you to receive all of the benefits, all the blessings that God has given to you. Treat with our Holy Ghost, come on her the other night shaking her like a drum, stammering lips. She said, I was taught that this wasn't for us. I was taught that this wasn't good because she went to a great big church. But she found out it was for her. God with no, will not withhold any of his covenant promises that he has made to his people. See, a lot of people don't know that the Holy Ghost is for them. A lot of people don't know that they can be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of their sin. A lot of preachers don't know. A lot of saints of God don't know that they can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. A lot of people don't know the divine teachings of the living God because they're always looking at it through the natural man. And the Bible said the natural man cannot comprehend the spiritual things of God because they're spiritually discerned. Yep, that's truly the way it is. Peter said in Matthew 16 and 16, he said, you are the son of the living God. John 6 and 68, he said, not only that, he said, you're the son of the living God, you're the only source of truth. And Peter said that he was the shepherd and the bishop of our souls, 1 Peter 2 and 25. Matthew 16 and 16, he said, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of the living God. You're the only source of truth. Well, because Jesus began to preach a little hard like I do sometimes, and all his followers, uh, you know, they ate the fishes and the loaves, and they heard the good things, but when Jesus began to lay down the law, began to lay down the word of God to them, the Bible said many of him Many of them walked away and followed him no more and there was nothing left but the twelve and he looked around at the twelve and said, are you going to leave me also? And Jesus said, where else can we go? He said, you have the words of, to eternal life. You're, you're, you're the only one who has the words of truth. So he is the shepherd and the bishop. In other words, he's the one who watches over us, and he's our overseer of our soul. John chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. The Bible declares him to be the great physician, the great healer, the great physician, the great doctor, showing compassion over the suffering, people that was under suffering. By his divine power, he healed a hopeless case. Not only that, but he healed lepers, the blinded eyes, withered hands, cast out demons. Done all kind of great and marvelous works. Why? Because of his love for humanity. John chapter 4, verses 15 through 26. And you have to also 
39 through 42. I'm just giving you the gist of this stuff. Breaking it down so you understand it. We find it to be a soul word. As he brings the darkness, those that are darkness of life, as in the pits of, under the control of Satan, and this woman, a Samaritan woman, darkened by sin in her life. He comes to her and begins to expound unto her the light of God's goodness. And she was so impressed by him. He said, call your husband. She said, sir, I don't have a husband. She said, you're right. You don't. She said, you've had five. And the one you live with now is not your husband. Peru, I perceive you're a prophet. And he carries on his conversation. And she said, you're, that, you're, you're the Christ that's been prophesied that would come and that would save us. He said, that's me. I'm him. I, I, you're talking to him. I'm him. I'm that promised Messiah. And the Bible said she was so excited having a glimmer of hope because finally deliverance has come. An opportunity to have her life changed. So she goes and tells all of her friends what Jesus said to her. How he read her mail and he told her, yes, I'm the Christ, the anointed one. And she began to expound to them all the great things about Jesus. Then the Bible said her friends came and heard him also. And when they heard him, they believed also. Not because of the testimony of the woman but because of the witness that they heard themselves and they become believers and followers of God. John chapter 6, verse 48. He displays himself as the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. Not as your fathers, speaking of Israel, when they came out of bondage, and they went out into the wilderness and marched around for 40 years. It wasn't but a three or four day journey, but because of their unbelief and their rebellion and their grumbling and their complaining, God let them wander. Now, how are you going to feed a multitude like that? The Bible said that God sent manna down from heaven and they was to go out and gather what they needed. He said, only get what you need. But some of them was gluttonous, and they filled their baskets running over. And because they only needed one, one wafer to sustain them with life for a whole day. And those that gathered more than they needed, worms come in it and it stunk. Or it stank. Choose your word. Stank or stunk. In other words, it didn't have a pleasant aroma. Then he said on Saturday, I mean on Friday, he said you go out and gather what you need for Sunday because it's your day of rest. You, you rest. You we won't do nothing on Sunday, I mean on Saturday. He said, it's your day of rest. And the Bible said, he told them gather enough for the next day. And the Bible said, some of them went out looking for it. See, they disobeyed God. They didn't need to look for it. They weren't going to be there. But what I'm saying that food sustained them. That bread sustained them. Here's what it do. It sustained the flesh man. It kept the flesh man healthy and vibrant. 
able to journey. Old people, young people. Old people didn't have no problems. Here's Susan getting up out of the church. My God, when you get up, get up. <laughs> she ain't my age yet. She's three years younger than me. You get up, just get up. It might be a little stiff, but walk it out. If you're not careful, you will let that become your habit. You know, I've had trouble in my knees. You know, I played football in high school and fell through buildings and everything else when I was building that. And I started down the steps one day and I, was, I grabbed the rail and started going like that. And I realized what I was doing. I said, that ain't going to happen, Bubba. I said, I ain't going to get into that. So I just, I make sure I go up and down them like that. Because if you start yielding territory, the devil will take it. I said, if you start yielding territory to the devil, he'll take it. Now, if I don't, if I hadn't changed, I'd be going up them steps like that all the time. Maybe Susan will change now when she gets up. Hey, I've got a right to be stiff at the prime age of 70. But I, I just don't let it bother me. I'm not going to succumb to it. It might be a day that I have to, but not until I really have to. I'm going to just act like I'm a young deer, leaping through the fields, trying to avoid the errors of Seth. So that natural bread fed and kept the flesh man nourished. But Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And when Jesus said, you eat this bread, he said, I'll feed the spiritual man. I'll make the spiritual man strong in your life. John chapter 7, verse 37, shows himself as the water of life. Satisfying those that thirst for him. You know, water is very important. You can't live without it. At that great day, Jesus stood and said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me. Let him take a drink of living waters. In reference to the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost. You need the water of life. And you need the thirst, that the Bible says, Them that thirst and hunger, I to righteousness shall be filled. So Jesus said, I'm the bread, I'm the living waters. Anything spiritually that you need, you'll find it looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You know, you don't have to lower yourself, give in to, to the aches and pains of the body. I, now, I, I want to rephrase that. If God touches you and heals your body, I mean, if you come in here and you got back problems or you got this or you got that, and I pray for you, and it miraculously is gone. Now, I've taught you this for years, but I don't believe somebody pay attention to it. They will be the enemy, because the Bible tells us that the, when the good seed of God is sown, the devil comes immediately to steal it away. Now, how will he steal it away? He'll bring a lying symptom. The Bible talks about lying wonders, lying symptom. He'll bring a symptom that's not real, but it feels real, and then you say, well, I must not got healed. And then that's when it really comes back on you. The spirit of life which is in Jesus Christ. He come to bring life to us. By his stripes we were healed. Hallelujah to God. We don't have to die grumpy old men and sassy old women. We do not have to die that way. 
Moses, when he died at the age of 120 years old, none of his natural abilities had left him. But you know why? He stayed in the presence of God. And it's so important. You never know when the Holy Ghost comes to your body, when you're worshiping God, oh hallelujah, when you're worshiping God, and you lift your hands and the Holy Ghost begins to quicken and move through your body. You never know what the Spirit of God is driving out of your body. Amen. Amen. And so keep what you got. Illustration. Several years ago. But most of you don't know. No, some of you do. Most of you do. I used to build houses. I used to be an electrician. I used to do remodeling and build houses. I'd hammered so much with that arm that Arthur tried to visit me. And I'd lay in bed, and if I moved, oh God, did it ever kill me. It'd wake me out of a dead sleep. It hurt so bad. And one morning, I'm sitting there drinking coffee and watching Benny Hinn. Of course, it could be anybody, Michael. He said, there's somebody in your right elbow wakes you up at night. I said, oh, hallelujah. I just took it. He was talking to me. So I went over there and I laid my hand right on the TV screen. I said, Lord, I receive my healing. Hallelujah. Oh, gone. Glory to God. I said, oh, hallelujah. That was for me. And I don't know, a month later or something, it started it tried to come back. I said, whoa, I am healed. Devil, you're not bringing this back on me. And it left. It come again the second time. Same thing. I said, no, you're not taking the gift of God that God gave me. You're not taking it from me. And then a third time. It come again, David. And I said, you ain't taking what God gave to me. I'm healed. You're a lying symptom. You got no part in my body. And that's probably been 10, 15 years ago. And i do anything I want to do. I'd probably outwork a lot of you young bucks in here. Because I do it all the time. My body's custom to going. And I've had major back problems. Y'all know that. I've, I've had surgery. And I'm, I'd make Susan look good getting up. I mean, I mean, I lived in pain. I didn't take her pain medicine stuff. I just lived in pain and adapted to it. I was in camp meeting when I was two or three years ago. Joe Wright walks up to me and says, are you ready to receive your healing? Said, God said he's going to heal you. Said, all I got to do is lay my hands right there on your back and he'll do the rest. Now, going on a long trip, I'd have to stop every hour or so. I'd have to get out of the car and I'd walk around. Get, you know, get loosened up, you know. Had to do all that kind of stuff. And we drove from western Kentucky to Galax and stopped for gas. Sue says, how's your back? I said, what back? I don't even know I got one now because it's normal. But before I got to healing, I knew I had a back. And every time I get up out of the chair, I go, oh, like that. I was healed. Me and Susan went somewhere to look at something. I got up, I went, oh, she looked at me and said, I said, false alarm. I said, I was just accustomed to doing it. But what I'm trying to say is, I built my, during this corona stuff, I built, my, I built an outbuilding. And I'd lift that plywood. I'd stand on a ladder, lift that plywood up, throw it up on the top. And one night, man, my back was back hurting. Like, like it did before. I said, Hold it here. You're not taking my healing. You're not taking my healing from me. You're a liar, the father of lies. 
and you sent a false symptom into my body, I do not receive it. Guess what? It would have left her immediately. I ain't been bothered since. And after I got healed, I picked up big boxes of tile. They were heavy, wouldn't they, Larry? Because Larry laid the tile. I picked up them commodes by myself, set the commodes, laid under them sinks, hooked up sinks. No problem here. Because Jesus was the healer, the great physician. But the devil will try to take from you what he can. Because he's not a gentleman. The Bible said he's a thief. Anybody here know what a thief is? Has somebody take something not theirs? My healing does not belong to the devil. It belongs to me. Because of the fall of Adam in the garden, it gives the devil the right to claim your body, to bring afflictions, diseases on it. But, when you become a born-again Christian, the devil has no right or authority over your body, your mind, nor your soul. The only authority, somebody said, well, he just bothered. You allow it. Elmer Davis sung a song, said, don't let the devil ride. He'd come from that guitar. No, no, don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, then he'll want to drive. So don't let him ride. And that is the fact. If you give in to him in your mind or activities that he's trying to bring your way, if you give in to them, he's taking control and you become under his power and authority. But Jesus said, you have power, that word power is authority over all the authority of the devil. It don't matter how much authority the devil's got, your authority comes from God is greater than any authority that the devil has. Why? Because of the greatness of Jesus Christ. Oops. I guess I better stay up here. I'll get down there. I'll go to Medlin. So he shows himself the last one that I did was as the water of life. Satisfying them that thirst for him. Like I say, you cannot live without water. You cannot spiritually live without the Spirit and without the Word of God. Because it takes that to feed your spiritual man. Now, I, I got four pages, and, the, and I'm a fourth way down on page two. So I guess I better quit. I'll give you some more of it next week. I say you preach on Jesus all the time. But the writer says, preach Jesus, son, because he'll preach. But these are things we need to know. Because a lot of time we read the Bible... We just read it and we don't get to points of the chapters. And all I'm trying to do is break it down for you and give you some highlights of what the specific things that God says about it. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say devil. You're not going to take from me that which God has given me. Because I belong to him. I don't belong to you. You have no authority over me. My authority is greater authority than you even think about having. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. I just want to ask you this morning. If you're not a Christian, I would encourage you to be one. Because, well, Brother Mike, I just don't think I can live it. Quit worrying about that. You get right with God, and he'll live it through you.
I found that out. That was my, I fought the altar call for a long time. Because I, the devil said, you can't live it. That'd be in my mind. You can't live it. But once I gave in, I fell in love with him and he meant more to me than anything else. You know what marriage is. You, if you got a good marriage and you really love that person, that person loves you. I, I do anything I can to make life easy on Susan as I can because I love her, you know. And Jesus is greater than I am. Amen. And he'll do anything he can to make your life as pleasant and as easy as possible. Could I get an amen to that? Now, by next, maybe even by Wednesday, I don't know. I hadn't heard from him because he's on vacation. We might have everything up and, and we're trying to just modernize the church. Equipment we've got in here has been in here since a lot of it since 93. And it's, a lot of it is outdated. And we had to buy updated equipment to do what we want to do. But, uh, but we should be able to have church Wednesday night, no problem. But if something would happen that we couldn't, Sonia, what a, we'll put it on Facebook. But I've, I don't foresee us not being able to have church Wednesday night. And I'm expecting you to be in church. So is God. All right, God bless everybody. Love you. Appreciate you.